Hi everyone, welcome back or welcome to my channel. My name's Lizzie and today I have a sew and tell for you. So last night I went to the new craft house um, Galentine's party and it was so much fun and so I finished my dress and I'll show it to you. Um, you may have seen my previous video which was a video where I talked through what I had in mind for this outfit so I'll put a link in the corner now if you want to go and watch that video first so that this video might make a bit more sense. Um, but first I guess I might as well tell you a little bit about the party. It was so fun and just such a lovely atmosphere and a lovely place to meet some new sewists, catch up with some sewists you've met before. Um, so it's in the new craft house, houses like studio space where they you know store all their fabrics and have their classes and stuff. And they decked it out with one whole wall, had strips of like pink and red sort of crepe paper or something hung up in strands like a feature backdrop wall. Um, they had a bar like serving drinks and you got a free drink with your ticket and then you could buy more drinks and they had these big jars of like love heart sweets and like heart shaped gummy sweets and fairy lights and stuff. It was all really cute and pretty and essentially we all like everyone obviously arrived and then there was mingling and everyone was just chatting and stroking each other's fabrics and talking about what they'd made to, or the, what they were wearing and then it moved on to the um, like the best what do they call it? I can't remember what exactly they call it, best dressed competition or best handmade outfit. But essentially everybody there who had made their own outfit, which was the majority of people, you could put your name down. And basically everybody does it. It doesn't matter whether your outfit is particularly spectacular or not. It's like everybody just has their name called out and they go into the middle of the room and like do a twirl and tell everybody, you know, what's the fabric, what's the pattern, say a little bit about your outfit. And it's so fun just to hear about everybody's outfits and what they're how they made them all um and then the judges so the judges so obviously the two new craft house girls and then elisa lex and um emily from self-assembly self-assembly required were the judges and so they did a bit of deliberation meanwhile the karaoke started and it was so much fun so they had like an old school you know like a screen set up with the words to come up and they had three microphones which just made it because obviously going up on your own it can be a bit nerve-wracking, but the fact that, you know, you could do a duo or a trio or just everybody go up there and sing was just fantastic and it just everybody really like loosened up and had a good time and we were all dancing and it was just a lovely atmosphere and if you didn't want to be involved in the karaoke, you could just choose to, you know, be at the other end of the room and mingle and chat with anybody who's not particularly fussed about the karaoke. It's just a really lovely evening and I hadn't managed to go to any of the new craft house parties in over a year because the Christmas one I didn't manage to get tickets for and then the summer one I think I had plans and just couldn't make it so I haven't been since the Christmas 2018 party and yeah I'd forgotten how much fun it was. Um, and I do just want to say anybody who has considered going to the parties before but has maybe been a bit shy or a bit unsure please please like go next time you won't regret it it's such a lovely atmosphere such lovely people. Um, I think people are sometimes a little bit surprised to hear that I actually get a little bit anxious about social situations sometimes because I think I generally do a quite good job of coming across as quite chatty and like confident but actually I get quite shy about these things and I get a bit stressed out about oh gosh what am I going to talk about with people and what am I going to say um, but obviously with the sewing community we can always fall back on just talking about fabric and what we're wearing and everything else. Um, but I do have the odd awkward moment and oh there was a girl, there was a lovely girl who was wearing the most beautiful outfit, I can't remember her name but she had like a f um, floral top on and it had like, and then like a pink skirt I think it was and she would kind of hacked a load of different patterns together, the peplum on her top was a selkie patterns pattern piece I remember and she was so lovely and she sort of spoke to me and said oh Lizzie I watch your channel and we were like right near where the karaoke was and it was all a bit loud and I just had a bit of an awkward moment where I, f I just feel like I feel a bit bad because I we could should have launched into conversation together and I think I was a little bit shy and awkward and just sort of said oh that's so nice to hear and didn't really know what else to say because I do still find it a bit bizarre like I know that obviously people watch my videos because I can see like how many views each video has had but it still just blows my mind that these are real like you guys watching are real human beings in real life so if you ever say hi to me and I'm a bit awkward I'm so sorry I'm not trying to be rude I just sometimes I'm a little bit awkward in social situations and I have a mind blank and don't know what to say but anyway it's lovely it was so lovely to meet lots of new faces yesterday so enough about the party now I'm going to move on to tell you about my outfit 
So as you know if you saw my previous video, the plan was to give a new lease of life to my V9075 jumpsuit that I made a couple of years ago, because it's red and the theme for the party was red and pink, so perfect. Um, and actually my the resulting garment ended up being quite a bit simpler than I'd first imagined. Now this is partly because I was strapped for time and I ended up, um, I basically did all this sewing in the evenings after work this week, but then Thursday and Friday I had plans after work, so actually I kind of had to squeeze it all into like a few evenings and I don't like sewing under pressure, so I kind of simplified things. But I also spent quite a bit of time doing some unpicking because I took the zip out and put the zip in again because I had a bit of a fit issue where I'd like taken it in too much at the back of the neck with the zip and it caused it to all like bunch at the front here so I needed to let out a bit of room again in the zip to smooth all that out but that required unpicking the lining and blah 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 so anyway let me show you what I actually ended up wearing and making and I'm actually really pleased with what I did in the end because at first I thought I was going to unpick all the princess seams and add these red spotted tulle ruffles to it but in the end if I'm honest I just couldn't face all that unpicking to unpick it all and then sew in all these ruffles again and actually some of you guys left some amazing comments on my last video giving me ideas for how I could maybe add the ruffles without having to unpick everything like by finishing the edges neatly and sort of top stitching them on which was a good idea. But actually, once I'd fixed the fit of it round the back of my neck, I actually realised I actually do really quite like the jumpsuit as it is, and I would like to try and get more wear about out of it as it is. So I thought instead of making permanent changes to this jumpsuit by sewing ruffles onto the jumpsuit or unpicking seams and adding them into the seams, I thought why not try and do something that is like a temporary change to this outfit. So, what I actually ended up with was an overskirt. So this is what I ended up making. Um, as you can see, it's got like a thin little waistband and that I made literally by chopping some length off the legs of the original jumpsuit because I didn't have any leftover fabric from when I made the original jumpsuit that's what the jumpsuit looks like. Um, so yeah, this is literally cut off the ends of the legs and then this tool, this is like the entire meter of tool that I bought and I had to chop some off the end to have enough to create the ruffle and I just squeezed the whole lot out of one meter of fabric. So I think I would have preferred to have a bit more volume in the tool but I only bought one meter of it so I just didn't have enough to, to like gather the skirt even more. But essentially, this little overskirt, I, it's got, at the back, it's just got two little poppers, like this, I hope you can see that, that those poppers just like pop together, they're very scruffily sewn on, um, and that just overlaps like so, and then I just left the, like an opening, and because it's tulle, and it's an overskirt, I didn't think there was much need to have like a zip or you, you, know, you can't really put a zip in tool or you probably can but just not very elegantly but once you've got this closed up I feel like you can't really tell that there's like actually an opening that's not closed up because it all just sits closed anyway and of course with this being so see-through I'm never going to wear it on its own I can wear it with other things if I want to I can wear it as I ended up doing over this dress, or I could wear it over other things, but I'm never going to wear it on its own, so it doesn't matter that actually I've got a peekaboo hole here of where it closes, because obviously you need that space to allow you to get it over your bum. So yeah, that's what I did. I had this overskirt that I literally wore over the top of the jumpsuit to just add a little bit of extra flavour and extra interest to the jumpsuit. I did also want to do kind of the same thing, create like a band and add ruffles to it to attach around the neck because I thought that would be quite cute to have like a collar of ruffles as well. You'll know from my previous video I was considering ruffles on the sleeves, ruffles on the ruffle, whoa, 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 ruffles. I was just considering adding ruffles everywhere I possibly could but I kind of ran out of time and I wasn't quite sure how to construct it properly to add the ruffles around the shoulders or around the around the neck opening. I kind of wanted to have it so that I would have some discrete poppers on the inside of the of the neckline, but then construct it so that the ruffles would sit out and down. And it's definitely possible, but I think in the time frame I just 
couldn't quite work out how I could do it quickly and neatly. But maybe if I, if I have another Valentine's themed event to go to in the future, I could get another like temporary edition I can add to my jumpsuit and have like a neckband, a removable neckband. I'm really pleased that I decided to go for a temporary change it's not even a temporary change, is it? I'm just glad I decided to go for a removable overskirt as opposed to actually changing this. Because if I'm honest, I, I probably wouldn't necessarily want to wear this over the jumpsuit all the time. Because it is quite, you know, that's quite a strong, quite a strong look with the red spotted tool. Like it's very Valentine's y. I think it would probably be lovely at Christmas. Um, but this makes it much more of a spectacle than just the plain red jumpsuit on its own. So the fact that I can remove it means that I can just get more wear out of both pieces because I've almost got two outfits now. I can wear this red jumpsuit as it is on its own, or I can wear it with the overskirt, or I could even wear this overskirt with other things. You know, I could wear it over something else, maybe with like a black outfit underneath or who knows, but I've just got options. I'm really proud of the fact that I decided to do this, give myself options and add a new lease of life to something I already have because you don't always need to make something new. If you want to make something new, go for it, there's like nothing wrong with that. But I'm really trying to minimise, I'm trying to maximise the wear of the things I already have rather than just rushing to make something new every time I have a special event. And I think, yeah, coming up with ways to wear something slightly differently is a really good idea. So I'm going to try and bear that in mind in the future, that, you know, try and add something extra to something I already have rather than sewing something from scratch. But yeah, one metre of tool. Some of you will know again from my previous video that I was also considering adding some pink cotton to this. So I kind of, my original idea was to have like some pink underneath the red spotted tool to like give a pink and red contrast. But when I was playing around with it in the end, I decided that it was just a bit much and I would prefer to keep it just all red and it was a bit more me because pink isn't so much me. Um, so yeah, I decided against the full on pink and red contrast in the end. It was quite fiddly working with the tool because tool sort of bounces around a bit and has a little bit of life of its own. But I basically just used a ton of pins, gathered all the fabric up. Um, I measured how long I needed this like waist makeshift waistband to be and just Essentially, this isn't bias binding because it wasn't cut on the bias, this is just a like on the grain strip of fabric. Um, but I essentially treated it as though treated it as though it was bias binding and I ironed it so that I had, you know, I folded the sides in and then in again and it's and all the ruffles are like sandwiched in between the strip of red basically. So there you have it, that is what I wore to the new Craft House Galentine's party. I hope you enjoyed seeing what I made, let me know if you have any feedback for me in the comments below, and I'll see you next time. Bye!